All right, let's kick this thing off. Uh, welcome back to 91 North, 95 South podcast page. This is Daniel Drainville doing a solo episode. It is now 12.57 a.m. the morning before the Pats are going to kick off against the Dolphins at 1 p.m. <laughs> Sunday. Let's get into a uh, Pats season preview because what better time is there than uh, literally hours before the season begins. Mac Jones last season, 2021-2022, uh, 80.4 PFF grade. That's pro football focus. If you're unfamiliar with the site, it's a statistical analysis site. This is, I'm getting this I don't have a subscription to this site, so I have uh, these stats per bostonsportswave.com. It's a pretty solid rookie campaign. Um, I watched pretty much every game for the Patriots last season, and I was impressed with Max's accuracy. I was impressed with his poise under pressure um, for a rookie. Well out outlived his expectations and especially you know to make it to a playoff round against the bills was something that i did not expect in the first season uh following tom brady's departure and the cam newton era a few things that mac did well last season i thought um besides just you know well playing playing what seemed like unbothered I was really impressed with his short throw accuracy. I think he goes through his reads really well. Um, And I, I, there's compilations you can look up on YouTube, on whatever, um, that'll break down how he goes through his reads. This is all happening within the span of seconds. You know, as football fans, we know this, how, how quickly, how important it is to quickly get the ball out of your hands. Um, and Mac has been doing that really well. It looks like, you know, his awareness, his poise, his his experience as a quarterback looks beyond his years. And so I think a lot of the success of the of the 2022 2023 New England Patriots is tied to the success of Mac Jones and the progression of Mac Jones. If Mac Jones makes a sophomore leap then I think it's possible that, you know, we sniff a playoff berth once again. Um, And it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough because the AFC, I believe, has gotten stronger. The Chargers, while they may not be top of their division this year, are going to be, I think, locked into one of those playoffs, playoff uh, wildcard spots, at least. And then there's a lot of good other teams in the AFC. It's going to be tough to to get to a, you know, a wild card spot this year, this season. The Dolphins went out and got stronger this offseason with the addition of, of Tyreek Hill. The Bills I have locked into that first spot, especially after watching this first game. Um... Bills versus the Rams on Thursday. Uh, Josh Allen looks like he's going to play incredibly this year. And the Bills haven't punted in since I can remember. So um, that's going to be a tough team to stop. And I think that might be that that's probably two guaranteed losses um, on the Patriots schedule coming up. Continuing from where we left off with Mac Jones, um, I I do think he he has a lot of room to get better. He has the arm talent, strength to be certainly an elite QB, but no, he's not there yet. Let's just go through offense and defense, and I'm gonna you know kind of grade grade these things uh, like that. Quarterback. Like I said, our success largely tied to Mac Jones this season. 
And it's not going to take an MVP caliber campaign out of Mac Jones to make it to the playoffs. I don't want to say that at all because we have other pieces. We have other stars on the team. Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson, uh, first and foremost, the two-headed rushing attack uh, that they delivered last season. Pro fo- Once again, Pro Football Focus had uh, Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson rated 86.1 and 81.1, respectively, amongst RBs, which would make Damian Harris third out of 61 R- running backs and Ramondre Stevenson, 10th out of 61 running backs. Um, that's when you're, when you're talking about star power, you know, two players in the top 10 in their position is a really important boost. I liked to joke last season that um, this, this rushing attack was the bargain version of Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. And... I don't have I don't have the numbers for Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb pulled up in front of me. But certainly, you know, judging just by their pro football focus grades of of these players, um, they're not far off from 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 those players. And may, maybe you know, I think Damian Harris might take a, a little bit of regression this season. Ramondre Stevenson might be worked a little bit more into the offense and the addition of Ty Montgomery leaves me with some questions about um, uh, what we're going to see from from this running back room. Will he be worked in more? He's listed in the depth chart as a kick and punt returner right now um, and third in the depth chart, I believe it's third behind Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson. Uh, in terms of running backs. And then you also have J.J. Taylor on the team still uh, re-signing. I think, I want to say Harris and Stevenson are going to be the primary ball carriers this this coming season. Um, but, you know, who knows how much work Ty Montgomery will get. He, he is a, a sort of a running back slash wide receiver. He can do a, a little bit of both. So... Belichick's going to find a way to work him into this offense, and we'll see what his role will be going forward. Um, but you're going to need something from from Jones, Harris, Stevenson. Something special out of these three players in order to carry you to the playoffs. Um, because wide receiver talent is 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 good it's solid there's a lot of uh multi-talented wide receivers um kendrick Bourne, jacoby myers um the addition of Devonte parker uh offers a lot and uh, and in the tight ends but jones harris stevenson the, they they have to make the leap to to sort of match the competition of what's going on in the rest of the AFC. Take a drink. Why don't you guys settle in a a little bit? All right, so we're talking Demian Harris, Ramondre Stevenson. Um... Next, let's go to, you know, focus a little bit more on the wide receivers. Uh, Jacoby Myers had a really impressive season last season. And he was, you know, he carried the torch, uh, you know, sorry, carried the duties of being wide receiver one for the Patriots last season, despite not having a touchdown until like near the end of the season, which is incredible. Uh, Mac. You know, clearly trusts him a lot. I've been thinking about KB, been thinking about Jacoby, Devontae Parker. Devontae Parker is uh, a threat to get the ball on multiple levels uh, because he is 
fast, he is tall, and he's athletic. I think he might be exactly the the kind of wide receiver that Mac needs at this point in his career. You can throw up to him and he, he will make contested catches and can be a sure-handed guy who can be a safety blanket for you. Jacoby Myers and him and Kendrick Bourne definitely pose an interesting um, slew of wide receivers, I would say. I think I was listening to Bill, Bill Simmons' podcast, and he said he was listening to probably WE, WEI, um, Boston Sports Radio, and someone had made a comment, and they said, the Pats don't have a number one wide receiver, but they have a lot of number twos. The more I thought about that, and I think about this quote almost, almost every day since I heard it, the more I'm like, yeah. No, yeah, that's kind of right. Not right in the sense that, you know, you have a depth chart that, you know, wide receiver one, two, three, four, however many, however many you have on the roster. But in the sense that, like, I'm going to pick, I'm going to play fantasy football and I'm going to draft Stefan Diggs in the first round, and then I might take a running back in the second round, third round, and then come back in the fourth round, and I'm going to draft Amon Ross St. Brown. That's my wide receiver, too. In that sense that you have your top tier guys, and then you have your lower tier guys, and then in the middle, you have the wide receiver twos who are just kind of quiet, you know, might go off for two touchdowns a game, but it's rare and just mostly just go about their business. Now, I don't know if Devontae Parker is going to be that or if he's going to be, you know, an offensive juggernaut. No one does. He's been on the Dolphins for for um, his whole career. You know, maybe Mac can unlock something in him. And maybe if Mac improves, you know, his capabilities and he makes that leap then Devontae Parker will you know obviously reap the rewards of that as well um I don't know it's overall it's a it's a it's still a solid offense also you know considering the tight end duo of of Jono Smith and Hunter Henry uh, to Jono Smith felt like he didn't get worked into the offense as much last season. Um, and I expect them to, you know, draw up some more plays for him this season. Because I think he can be a talented player. Like I said, it's not superstar talent. But there's a lot of solid pieces here. And it has the trademarks of a Belichick offense minus Tom Brady. Um, and I think if we were looking at this this roster... The same roster constructed with, you know, Tom Brady five years ago um, instead of Mac Jones. We would be looking at this as a as a as a super Super Bowl contender. Obviously, that's easy to say because you have the, the most winning quarterback of all time at, at the helm. But. If, if this was a roster that that Tom Brady had had in 2017, 2018, 2019, whenever, Patriots fans would be going, oh, Brady doesn't have any anyone to throw to again. Same as always. If Mac Jones makes that leap, then the team can succeed. But that's a big if. That's a big if. And it's only his second year. Might not be ready for that. Uh, anyways, uh, getting to the to the offensive line. Uh, you lose Shaq Mason to the Buccaneers. In a stunner, Bill Belichick drafts Cole Strange, rookie out of Chattanooga, um, to play to play guard. I think he's gonna play right guard 
I think. I, kinda, I, I think I'm wrong on that. I think he's going to play left guard, but I'm psyching myself out. Uh, but you know, you've got you've got him. You've got Michael Unwino, uh, David Andrews. You know, always playing center, and Trent Brown. Signing of Trent Brown is really important piece to this because you get Cole Strange to replace, you know, the loss in Shaq Mason. Uh, Onwino is actually taking the position of Shaq, you know, that Shaq Mason formerly played, um, but is now back in his natural position. And I think Onwino is a very talented player. The line is looking really good to me. Uh, and I think it's it has a chance to get even better as the season progresses, which with this rushing attack could be really dangerous. Um, so that's something to look forward to. Defensively, uh, the most glaring issue was was at quarter cornerback, and that issue is still in very much in flux. Uh, Jonathan Jones is going to be our, you know, starting one, I think cornerback one, I don't know. It depends. You never know with Bill Belichick, you know, he's going to, he's going to ride whoever he thinks is the hot hand. Jalen Mills apparently was impressive during preseason. Um, but who knows who will be. Who will be covering who uh, later on today? One of them is going to have to match up against Tyree Kill. And I believe um, actually two people will have to be matched up against Tyree Kill. Probably something like Jonathan Jones covering him for the first part of the game. And, you know, Devin McCourty uh, shading him at safety. But. Jalen Mills and Jonathan Jones are two primary cornerbacks, and I don't I don't feel safe about that. I don't I still don't feel safe about that. I know Jonathan Jones is is still a talented player, um, and Jalen Mills, who we got acquired last season, if you were watching through the season, was not impressive. Now you're handing them the keys. Uh, it's the most glaring problem still on defense. When you have Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle in your division and you have a problem at cornerback, you're almost guaranteeing yourself, it seems like, two losses. And I don't I don't like uh, I don't like that for your chances of making the playoffs. Never mind that, like even getting better than last season, which we already, you know, made it to a playoff game last season. You know, you're trying to improve, and we haven't, we haven't necessarily, on on the surface level, seems like what would be making improvements. And I guess that is my, you know, sort of trying to collect my thoughts and summarize what happened in the off season and relate it to what I think is going to happen in the upcoming season. You have to have some sort of level of not distrust, but you have to be at least a little upset with, with the, the front office and, you know, whoever's making the decisions at the top. I feel like there was a move that you, you could have made to, make this team more palatable maybe acquiring you know a true number one wide receiver like a stefan Diggs to to josh allen who can who can you know is an x factor and can take over the game with their superstar talent and the defense seems lackluster i think it's going to be worse than it than it was was at last season actually you know, you lose Dante Hightower and Jamie Collins. Bring in Jabril Peppers, who I love the signing of Jabril Peppers, too. I love the signing of Jabril Peppers. He's a Swiss Army knife on the defense, and it plays safety. I don't want to give the wrong idea, because there's still great 
great players on defense. I, I just think that when moving forward, I just really don't have confidence in the cornerbacks that we have. And I could be proven wrong. I would love to be proven wrong. But I saw what the Bills did in that playoff game against against our secondary and they just look so much faster and so much stronger and we had nothing to stop them and now we've still lost depth at the cornerback position and we lost a great player at the cornerback position and I don't see how you can love your odds going forward when you feel like you've lost strength at that position. I don't know. But the defense still seems like it's going to be at least at least average. You keep Matthew Judon. Bring in Mac Wilson, like I said. Jabril Peppers. And you still have Kyle Duggar, who played incredibly last season. Devin McCourty coming back once again. Christian Barmore, you're hoping he he uh, take makes a leap in his sophomore season, and then um, sorry, so tired. <laughs> uh, Jawan Bentley, um, playing linebacker, who was an in-house free agent signing, uh, still young, hoping that he can increase uh, his level of play you're relying on a lot of or you're 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 hoping that a lot of players can unlock their potential in order to win this season frankly i don't see us making playoffs i don't see us making the wild card spot i could just be really down on the team right now I'm still excited to watch, but I don't know if if the team as currently constructed has what it takes to compete with the other talent in the AFC. And I know every season, you know, other teams lose players, the injury to whatever. So you can't completely discount it, but there's a lot to prove for the Patriots in this in this season uh, season opener. Maybe I'll have something else to say after that. I hope so. Anyways. I think I've talked about pretty much everything that I wanted to cover. Um, I'm not going to go through all the individual games uh, right now. If I were to throw out a number for prediction... Around 500, nine and eight, 10 and seven to me, 10 and seven is achievable. 11 and six seems crazy right now, but I'm excited about Mac Jones. I'm excited. It's Bill, Bill Belichick's our coach. Football's back and We've got an action-packed day coming up. Um, If you're betting the Patriots today, good luck. I will not be. Not until I see something. All right, anyways. I love you all, and have a great day of football. Have fun. Um, Enjoy your Sunday. Relax. And let's have a good season, okay? Thanks. Bye. I'm going to say this directly into the camera so that y- y'all can hear me. I I love Jason Tatum more than I love any member of my family. I I love Jason Tatum more than I more than I love my family. What I probably would to bump Kawhi Leonard in terms of small forwards right now, of course excluding injuries.
You gotta be out of your mind. Yeah, <laughs> that's tough. <laughs> Kawhi Leonard, a champion. This man won Canada a champion. What do you <laughs>